Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do the GCSE Pass Paper at Excel 2018. And I only chose the questions that are 5 marks. Because I think probably some of you guys are having trouble on answering them. So let's start now. So for every question in here, I want you guys to at least try. So pause the video and then try maybe. Or if you have done this before, then you can just continue answering the questions. So here, we need to work out the coordinates of C. And this is our C. As you can see, the last point here is 6, 7. Therefore, the X here is at 6 because that is our X. And the Y here is at 7. If you check the last point over here, it's 38, 36. Therefore, the X here is 38. And the Y over here is 36 because it is aligned. Let's start with the X. For the X, it's so easy because it says here that we have four identical squares. Since these are squares, it means they would have the same side. So as you can see this one over here, this one is connected up to here, this one up to here. If I'm going to connect the line, so basically 1, 2, 3, 4. And what is the difference between 38 and 36? So 38, I'm sorry, 38 and 6, which is equivalent to 32. And then we are going to divide it into 4 because we have 4 squares that are sharing the same side. So therefore... Each one of these is 8, 8, 8, and 8. Since, since our concern is here, which is the C here, this C contains an X value which is 8, 8. So 6 plus 8 plus 8, which will just be 22. So therefore, our X over here is 22. So the X coordinate of this C is 22. Next. Let's talk about the Y. When it comes to the Y, we have a difference from here all the way here. So from 36 to 7, so 36 minus 7, so the distance from 7 to 36 is 29. So we already know that this is 8, therefore that would be 8. And this one over here is 8, therefore that would be 8. But the problem in here is this part over here. There's an overlapping part. So we cannot write 8 here and 8. So if I'm going to put C, C is here. But as you can see, this one is also 8. Therefore, this one over here is 8. So 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24. But this one over here is, and this one is over here is 29. Therefore, this part over here must be 5 in order for them to be to become 29 therefore this one is 5 and this part over here would be 3 and if you want x over here since that is 3 therefore that is 3 and this part over here the whole thing is 8 but this would be 5 that what that is why 7 plus 8 plus 5 so 7 plus 8 plus 5 which would be 20. So here I just used a logical way of thinking. Next question. A and B are points on the circle. BC is tangent to the circle. AOC is a straight line. Angle ABO is X. So angle ABO. So I need to draw an imaginary line here. And this is our X. This part over here is our X. Next, find the size of the angle ACB in terms of X. So this is what we are looking for. ACB. Next, give your answer in simplest form. Give the reasons for each stage of your working. So the only thing that we know so far is that this is X. And there's this line over here, which is our radius. If this is X over here, I, can, I could say... Or I can say that this one over here is also x, y. This one over here is a radius. Therefore, they are equivalent. It's an isosceles triangle. Therefore, this part over here, the inside. So, angle AOB. 
So angle AOB is equivalent to 180 minus 2x because the triangles add up to 180. So you can just write the reason here, triangle add up to 180. Why do I need to give reason? Because it says that we need to give reasons for each step. So we already know this part over here which is 180 minus 2x. Next, we know that this one over here is 90 degree angle. Why? We have a, we have a theorem, in circle theorem, that our, uh, the radius and the tangent makes a right angle. Therefore, O, B, C, angle O, B, C is equivalent to 90 degrees. So, radius and tangent are perpendicular. I'll just use shortcuts or make 90 degree angle. We know that this is 180 minus 2x and remember guys that AOB, uh, AOC is a straight line therefore if I want to find the angle here which is angle COB or BOC so angle BOC would be equivalent to 180 minus the angle here because they form a straight line so 180 minus 2x so simplifying this 180 minus 180 plus 2x therefore this one over here is 2x so angle BOC is just 2x so angles in a straight line so angles in a straight line makes 180 degrees so we already know that this is 90 and the angle here is 2x then we can find OCB so angle OCB so angle OCB is equivalent to 180 minus 2x minus 90 again the triangle add up to 180 so write a reason triangles or angle in a triangle add up to 180 degrees and we will be getting 90 minus 2x that is our angle OCB so OCB is equal to 180 minus 2x minus 90 OCB is equivalent to 90 minus 2x and that would be our answer for this question so y is inversely proportional to d squared when d is equal to 10 and y is equal to 4 so y is inversely proportional to d squared so d squared and k and that is how you write it when you are writing uh, oh sorry this is inversely proportional if it's directly proportional, this would be right, but this is inversely proportional. Since we need to find k first, and k here would be, sub, uh, we can get k by writing an equation first, and substituting d and y with the values that we have. So y is equivalent to 4, is equivalent, uh, so y is equal to 4, 1 over d squared, which is 10, so 10 squared k. And y is equivalent to 1 over 100k. Since I want my k, I have to bring 100 over, uh, 100, 1 over 100 to the other side. So I have to multiply both sides by 100. Therefore, k... Oh, sorry, the, this is 4. So 100 times 4, that would be 400. That is our k. Therefore, y is equivalent to... k is 400, so 400 over d squared. That is one of the equations so far. Next, let's go to the other equation. D is directly proportional to x squared. So D is directly proportional to x squared. So that is our equation. Then we will establish an equation which is x squared k. We need to find k again by substituting x and D. So D is 24 is equals to x squared which is 4. 2 squared and then k then divide both sides by 4 divide both sides by 4 so k is equivalent to 6 therefore our equation would be d is equals to x squared and then k is 6 so 6x squared since this is our d it says in here find a formula for y in terms of x so y in terms of x but this is d 
So we're going to substitute this value over here. So this D will be placed inside. So Y is equivalent to 400 over D squared, which is 6X squared. So we will replace that D by 6X squared. So then it will be Y is equals to 400 over 36X squared. Sorry, this is squared, so that's going to be 4. And that is how we write y in terms of x. This is y is equal to 400 divided by 6x squared. The point P has a coordinates of 3, 4. The point Q has a coordinates of A, B. A line perpendicular to PQ is given by the equation 3x plus 2y is equal to 7. Find an expression for B in terms of A. So, we have PQ. So, let's just say I will just sketch that is my PQ. And along the PQ, there's a line that exists. And that is perpendicular. And that line has an equation of 3x plus 2y is equivalent to 7. So, that is basically what the uh, statement in here says. Since they are perpendicular, it means their slope are negative reciprocal. So I have to find the slope of this line by rearranging, bringing 3x to the other side. So 2y is equivalent to 7 minus 3x. I just have to bring it to the other side. Next, divide both sides by 2, by 2, by 2. Therefore, y is equivalent to, I'll just write the one with x first, 3x over 2 plus 7 over 2. Therefore, the m of this line is equivalent to negative 3 over 2. Therefore, the slope of PQ or the gradient of PQ, the gradient of PQ would be the reciprocal of this and the negative part. So, it will be negative the reciprocal of this which is 2 over 3 negative. So, basically 2 over 3 positive. So if you have two perpendicular lines, their slopes are negative reciprocal of each other. Therefore, M would be two-thirds. So PQ has a slope of, so M of PQ is equivalent to 2 over 3. So we are going to use that fact here. And how do we find the gradient Y1 or Y2 minus Y1? So that would be B minus 4 all over uh, x2 minus x1, which is a over 3. And that would be equivalent to 2 over 3. So we need to find an expression for b in terms of a. So we can first cross multiply. So cross multiplying this one over here. So 3 times b. So 3b minus 12. 2 times a. 2a. And then minus 6. Next, bring 12 to the other side by adding 12 here, adding 12. Therefore, 3b is equivalent to 2a plus 6. And then dividing both sides by 3, by 3. Therefore, b is equivalent to 2a plus 6 all over 3. And that's what we need to write in here. So b is equal to 2a plus 6 all over 3. Our last question, so n is an integer such that 3n plus 2 is less than or equal to 14 and 6n over n squared plus 5 is greater than 1. Find all the possible values of n. So first is rearrange the equation, find our n. So 3n plus 2 is less than or equal to 14. So bring 2 to the other side by minus 2 on both sides. So 3n is less than 12 divided by 3 divided by 3. Therefore, n must be less than our 4, less than or equal to 4. That is one of the equation. Then we would have another equation from here. So all you have to do is to cross multiply. So 6n over n squared plus 5 must be greater than 1 over 1. I just put a fraction for 1, which is over 1, so I can cross multiply it. Or I can bring n squared to the other side by multiplying both sides by 
n squared plus 5. So it would be 6n is greater than n squared plus 5. So the next thing that we have to do now is bring 6n to the other side. So that would be 0 is less than n squared minus 6n plus 5. So we are going to find the values of n here, uh, the zeros here. So how can we do that? We could do factoring, quadratic formula, or whatever method you want to use, guys. And if you need factoring or quadratic formula, I have a video on that. Please watch it if you don't know how to do it. I will just do factoring over here, and that would be n minus 1 and n minus 5. Therefore, n is uh, 1 and is 5. I did not put any sign in here yet. Because I don't know whether it should be greater than or less than, or greater than and less than. So how should I find it out? As you can see, this one is a quadratic equation. So one way to, uh, this is one way wha uh, how I do it, is by trying to sketch the graph. If I sketch the graph, I have roots, which is 1, and roots, which is 5. Now, the question is, is the graph opening upward or downward? So... If, if, you, uh, if you don't know whether it's opening upward or downward, look for the highest coefficient over here, or the leading coefficient. It's positive, therefore the graph goes upward. Next, since we need a value, the value here must be less than 0. When you say less than 0, everything that below the x-axis, because they are negative. So, n must be in between here. And what is the x in there? So, when n is bigger than 1 and greater than uh, less than 5 so n is in between 1 and 5 so for example 2 3 4 5 or point something all of those points all of those points when you substitute it here it will all give you a negative value that's why we are going to choose those from 1 to 5 so find all the possible values of n given it's an integer so we have four or three three inequalities all we have to do is to make a number line so we could start from zero one two three four and five let's start with this so n is less than or equal to four so n is less than or equal to four it means everything towards this side for this one it says n is more than one so n is more than one it's that side. And this one over here, it says n is less than 5. So everything here towards that side. So just get the, uh, the one that all of them meets. They all meet here. And here. Therefore, our solutions would be not including 1 because not including the 1. It is not shaded. But 2 is included. 3 is included. And 4 is included because this is shaded. Therefore, our answers are 2, 3, and 4. Okay, one more thing, guys. If you don't know or if you don't understand what I did over here, I have another method that I usually use here. So, I'll just do it on this side over here. Here. So, we know that n is equivalent to 1 and n is equivalent to 5. We can do sign diagram. When you, say sign, when you say sign diagram, choose any number on the left side, for example, 0. If I substitute 0 over here, what would I get? I would get 5, which is positive. If I substitute any number here that is in between 1 uh, to 5, let's just say 2, I put it in here, I would get a number that is negative. And if I substitute any number here, okay, I think uh, it wasn't shown again. I'll... Uh, it wasn't shown on the video, sorry. So again, I will make a sign diagram starting from 1 and 5. Imagine it's a number line over here. There's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Choose any number on the left side of the 1. <clears throat> Example 0. Once you get 0, you substitute it here. And you will get a value which is positive. Therefore, that would be positive. And then choose any number in between 1 to 5. So 2, 3, 4, or even the decimals. It will work. All you have to do is to substitute it here. And you will get a negative value. That's why here it's negative. 
If you substitute any number on the right side, so maybe 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, blah, 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 substitute it here, and you will get a positive. And remember, we needed a less than 0, so this must be less than 0. That is why we are going to take this, because everything here will be less than 0. They are negative numbers. That is why n must be bigger than 1, because everything here is bigger than 1, and then n is less than 5 because everything here is less than 5. Thanks for watching.